Hello, this is Tim Congdon. I'm Chair of the Institute of International Monetary Research at the University of Buckingham. It's uh, late June 2023, uh, and uh, I want to uh, give a uh, forecast, or at least an analysis, looking forward, um, of uh, the prospects for the main Western economies. I'll talk a little bit about um, the developing world too, but uh, and very much from a uh, quantity theory monetarist perspective. Now things have changed dramatically compared with three years ago. Three years ago, uh, my focus was on the money growth explosion going on um, in uh, the USA, the Eurozone, the UK, etc. Um, as central banks responded to the COVID uh, pandemic. But now we're not seeing money growth exploding, we're seeing the opposite. We're seeing the quantity of money actually falling. And just as um, I used the money growth explosion to make strong forecasts to prove correct of rising inflation, um, we obviously need to change our view given that the uh, numbers have gone in the opposite direction. Having said that, um, to use the contraction of money, which started in the USA really, say, six months ago, um, as the basis for recession forecast so far has been premature. Anyway, let me, um, and I'm going to look on in this video to next year. Here is the chart of money growth in the USA. Uh, we have both the annual rate of increase uh, and the three-monthly annualized change. That three-monthly annualized change getting us right up to sort of real time, really the, 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 the most valuable uh, current indicator of what's going on. And um, the, you'll see there the explosion in 2020, et cetera. Uh, and now uh, in the recent past, uh, the actual contraction of money, very different from the 2010s with that long period of stability. I haven't got time today for the Eurozone, the UK, Japan, uh, Canada, Australia. Um, the main things to say here are that um, the, US, the, the Eurozone and the UK didn't have such an extreme money growth explosion as the USA, but they did have a, a sharp acceleration in money growth in 2020. And today the pattern in those in, in the Eurozone, the UK is similar. Money growth has, has changed to a contraction of the quantity of money. Japan is different, but... Um, now, so this gives us the monetary scene in the main Western economies. Let me just, I won't say much more about them, but in China and India, the situation is very different. Money growth has been high but stable, uh, and that's been more in line with the strong trend growth rate of output in those economies. Um, the uh, argument that I'm going to make is, of course, that, that this contraction of money is negative for economic activity, working largely through asset markets. The current strength in the US stock market to me is an anomaly, um, but there we are. It's, one has to note, note the facts. House prices certainly going downwards now in the main economies, reverting what was going on in 2021. There are differences and contrasts with the past. You'll see from this chart that the money contraction isn't quite as sharp in the USA so far as in the Great Recession of 2009 and 2010. But I would like to make a general point here, which is that I base my forward view very much on money trends, but I don't dispute that interest rates matter. You know, plainly there's a direct effect from interest rates on the housing market. What happens to the housing market is then very crucial because housing market tends to lead economic activity. Uh, and um, there is a difference between the current money contraction and that in the Great Recession period. The Great Recession, uh, the Federal Reserve reacted by slashing interest rates to practically zero. At present, you've got money, money growth being, giving way to contractions of money, and interest rates have gone up sharply. 
That will be negative for economic activity, both because it will discourage new bank credit and secondly because there's quite a lot of interest-bearing money balances inside the broad money total. It wants people to hold a higher ratio of money to GDP. Okay. Forecasts of a recession so far have been premature. One of the reasons is that um, the money explosion of 2021 was so extreme that people, companies, had excess money balances even through into last year. Strong balance sheets, there have been some coming asset prices falling a little bit, but they're still very high because of what had happened in the previous year or two. What's happening now is that um, you've still got persisting rather high inflation. That's causing, obviously, nominal incomes are rising. Money is contracting. So the ratio of money to GDP is going down. So the monetary overhang is being removed. And, and let's just look at this chart. You can see that there's this blip upwards, the excess money growth of 2021. Then it comes back down again. And we're almost back down to where we were in 2019. In fact, on my forecasts, we'd be back down there by, say, the end of this year, when interest rates will be much higher than they were in 2019. So if you pull this together, it's a monetary background to recession. One also has to say in this context, and I, you know, I look at interest rates, of what's happened in labor markets, these are all part of the story. I don't just focus look on the money and banking system, but we look at the whole economy. Uh, and um, obviously, we haven't as yet had major rises in unemployment. Every previous episode of serious inflation in the USA in the post war period has had to be countered by tightening by the Federal Reserve plus rises in, in unemployment, with the unemployment rate typically rising by 3% in these episodes, you know, going up from 4% um, to 7% or 6% to 9%, from the current 3.5% to, well, 6, 6.5%. That hasn't happened yet. These things, on the kind of analysis I'm giving, are likely to happen in the next year or so. Now, obviously, the question then is, what's going to happen in 2024? Crucially, what's going to happen to inflation and interest rates? Inflation will come down. Uh, you know, um, just as in 2020, I could say, looking at that explosion in money growth, inflation is going to soar. Money is now contracting. Inflation is going to come down. And, you know, one has to concede that, that, that there are these things like shocks to commodity prices, reversals of those shocks, that sort of thing. And part of the improvement in inflation that's happened in the last six to nine months is indeed the reversal of the transitory um, COVID-related effects. But um, the prospect, therefore, is recession, falling inflation. What about interest rates? Now, I think probably my most important message today is that the central banks, I mean, they're just in such a mess at the moment, they're repeating the mistakes of 2008 and 2009. Late 2008, all these fears of the banking system. So policymakers said, we must make banks safe. We must make sure banks have more capital relative to their assets. Capital asset ratios were raised effectively in autumn 2008, when the banks knew that the Basel III rules were going to be taking effect in due course, banks had to hold roughly 60-70% more capital relative to risk assets. What did they do? They stopped their risk assets growing as far as possible. They reduced their risk assets. When I repay a bank loan, I use a bank deposit to repay the loan. The deposit disappears, the loan disappears, the deposit disappears from the economy. The deposit is money. So Basel III meant a period of money destruction, which intensified the recession. That's what made the Great Recession a great recession, all right? Look, regulators, bank, central bankers, if you want to do this, don't do it in a recession, all right? Anyway, that is, but I'm afraid that's what's going on again. 
The talk in the USA is of banks having to have a 20% higher capital charge for risk assets. That would be deflationary. Banks already know about all these kind of this, this sort of talk and look at what's happening to the growth of US banks' loan assets. This is a chart of uh, loans and leases in bank credit, the most important type of asset that US banks have, over 60% of their total assets. Booming didn't do very much during the COVID period. Essentially, um, you know, there was COVID, people didn't go to their bank to arrange new loans, the bank credit was flat. And then with the end of COVID in late 21 and 22, interest rates were zero, the banks had plenty of capital, um, the banks responded by trying to grow their bank, balance, their, their, their bank loans quickly. And you can see um, how the, uh, there's a three month growth rate, three month annualized growth rate of loans and leases went from roughly zero in 2021 to 15% in the middle of last year. And what's happened more recently, it's crashed to zero. In fact, the last three month annualized period, it's actually slightly negative. You impose higher capital asset ratios on top of that, you'll get further contraction of this series. How do banks grow their businesses? How does money growth occur? It occurs partly, usually mostly, because banks grow their loan books. They add a loan, they add a deposit to both sides of their balance sheet. Look at what's happening at the moment in the USA. Similar things going on um, in the um, Eurozone and the UK. I haven't looked at Canada and Australia, but I expect they're similar. In Japan, um, money growth and growth of bank credit are, are very low. They're still positive. Um, so what you've got here is that um, the uh, um, higher interest rates are deterring mortgages, the fears of higher capital asset ratios deterring lending to companies. You've got the squeeze on bank credit. Okay, so we get, say, to the middle of 2024. It's a recession. Money growth is still flat or money is contracting. How do central banks react to this situation? They don't understand this link, or rather obvious link, between bank regulation and the growth of credit and money. They don't apparently understand it. So what do they do? They slash interest rates, just as in uh, early 2009, late 2008, early 2009. So I think what I would, my conclusions from this uh, presentation are that um, you're going to see a recession and you're going to, then going to see next year uh, large falls in both inflation and interest rates. Um, obviously, there is quite a lot of uh, criticism of, of the way that central banks uh, have been handling things in the last few years. Yes, the kind of prognosis I'm giving is one of severe instability. The central bank deserve all the, all the blame they're receiving. They have totally messed up the situation. And the guts of the analytical mistake they're making is they never look at the quantity of money when they analyze the economy. Thank you.